Okay, here it is, uh, Virginia Beach around 25th Street. I'm coming up on the Norwegian flag uh, pretty soon, and uh, what's the Princess Anne. It's actually uh, one b very big street here is called Princess Anne, and she's Norwegian. There's some uh, festival on the beach. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, we will, I'm sure there's always in the summer some festival, so. I'm not sure which one this is because it's not 4th of July. And uh, I think it's this uh, Virginia Legends. I don't know, every weekend here there's something in the summer to draw the tourists and keep them entertained. In America, you gotta be entertained. <laughs> That's everything. This beautiful ocean today. It really does change your view on life, you know, when you walk on the ocean side versus the street side. Um, so, yeah, this is the. Norwegian and American flags. You know, I think that you can see the American flag blowing. Let me get a better angle here. Yeah, there's Norway, there's uh, America, and then there's the POW MIA veterans flag. So, and then this is the Princess Anne. The sun is not in the best of places. I might reshoot this, you know. You know, uh, here. So, you know, let me just, uh, yeah, there we go. You zoom in on that. It's even on a, on a good day, it's hard to see the detail here. But, uh, yeah. yeah, so I got the sunglasses on. That's why I can't read it, but I think without the sunglasses, it's readable. You can read all of this. So, there was a Norwegian shipwreck. Uh, that occurred off of here and then it's uh here it is i am a norwegian landy lady i stand here as my sister before me to wish the men of the sea safe return home and then here's the here's the more of the story down here i'll read this to you in memory this to the souls the sea uh, did uh gall to the peace eternally and an appreciation to all who braved its uh, perils and freedom's cause dedicated to the citizens of norway on the 25th of Liberation Day in May 1970 by the citizens of Virginia Beach, Virginia. So there is a Virginia Beach connection to Norway. And I just thought that would be interesting. Behind here they have like a, uh, a more uh, veterans uh, related uh, things here. Um, I think going back to the Vietnam War and then they're talking about the F-14 Tomcat, a very remarkable airplane made in America before project management mythology and AutoCAD. They were making really cool stuff before all this uh, corporate methodologies came out and before work got so boring. You know, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what to say. But uh, it's just a whole lot of common sense, you know, and just a lot of drive, a whole team that had drive to do excellent things. But like this uh, F-14 and these aircraft carriers, they were, they were built way before Kanban boards and JIRA and you know, doing all these uh, crazy project management things, you know, it's, uh, I, I mean, there is probably a methodology and a, a rhythm, but it was probably more task lists and to-do notes, and there was probably some process, but it was probably more common sense oriented, instead of like a lot of tools and structures and documents, but, uh, yeah, I'm to, I don't know if I should turn the camera and get this wider view, but if I turn it now, it'll probably screw up the, the video, but here's like a, aircraft carrier deck. This is interesting. So it looks like they fenced it off so you can't go play on it. But I think this is probably some kind of stage of some sort. You know, and then this is uh, where it began, the birthplace of carrier innovation. So that, I think, started here in the Norfolk, Virginia area. And then here is the statues. And we have all the flags of the services here. There's mine, Navy. You know, and then, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, this is cool. This is really cool. I, I'd seen this before, a long time ago, and everything, and I just hadn't made a film about it. But uh, yeah, Norway and America, best friends. And it's in, as I say to all these Norwegians, it's in their best interest. America is like a super strong superpower, so we can keep enjoying our life in Norway. If it wasn't for America, we wouldn't have this life in Norway. It was Americans who discovered the oil, and it's Americans who back up uh, Europe. So, you know, I wish people would hold their tongues a little bit more when casting criticism on America. 
a lot of people here work very hard and don't get very much and then those of us who are living in Norway enjoy it off of their backs you know so just be mindful of that and they're not even here people aren't even conscientious of that they're not even thinking about that they're thinking just you know how to survive their daily lives you know so I mean uh, yeah yeah so here is a uh, more inscription here let me just see if it reads I'll just read it to you the people of Moss, Norway, I know this town, it's outside Oslo, it uh, smells, have sent me to commemorate, uh, commemorate the Norwegian and American seamen who perished together when the Norwegian uh, bark uh, dictator of Moss was wrecked off of these shores on March 27th, 1891. Uh, donors uh, are the following uh, firms in Moss. I'll just, uh, Acti Selskop at Alpha, uh, AS, Opsilon, Bjorn, Bjornstad and Company, Electro uh, Chemisk, Heli Hansen, I know that one, Sigurd uh, Harrell, <laughs> my Norwegian is bad, Harrell Offset and Company, Ilovan, Aluminum uh, fab, uh, Factory, Aluminum Fabric, Corey uh, Mat Matthiasen and Moss, uh, Akti Moller and Moss, Doc, uh, okay, well, a lot of people, and the Royal Norwegian Navy. And the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation, basically NRCO, and this is to honor. Let's see, to uh, honor Thomas Baptist, uh, uh, sister city, so who's uh, made the statue reality. Okay, and then Newt Abramson, director of Moss, uh, the school music, the school music corps, who came to visit. So they had a band here, and this was in the 90s. So, yeah, this is this is all quite good. This is a, okay, here's another another thing worth reading. Maybe you guys can pause the screen and read it. I'm, I'm not that good at reading. My Norwegian is not doing good today. Uh, you know, I passed the exam, and after the exam, I just hadn't been speaking it that much. I was speaking every day, and then it happens. You know, I'm hanging around with a bunch of English-speaking people. I'm living in Ukraine now, you know, most of the time. So it's just, a, it's been a little bit challenging, you know. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of help on both sides to get this uh, get this up and running. You know, there was a lot of uh, work. But anyway, wish you all have a nice day. Hada, uh, be safe, uh, Nestegong.